they're here this early? Yeah, they texted me and said they had landed like 30 minutes ago and they just got Uber downloaded on their phone. So it's, I was not expecting them to be here before practice. I was expecting a 3 p.m. arrival, but uh, no, it was a little bit of a surprise. And I haven't seen them in a long time, so put a big smile on my face. Do you have to kind of watch what you say when your parents are looking over your shoulders? Not so much my dad, but when my mom's around, absolutely. <laughs> no, no swear words, gotta watch what I say. Make sure I represent us well. How, how quick is this going for you? I, I was talking to, uh, I think it was Keon and Johnny yesterday. Like, I remember moving in in June, wide-eyed, like, ready to get this thing going. Ooh, I love you, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> ready to get this thing going, and, and summer went really, really fast. We got a little bit of break in August, and then the coach was like, it's going to be February before you know it. And like, it's March now. It's, it has just flown by. It's, and, but it's been on How does it seem to you, just the experience? It's something that I couldn't have asked, like, asked for. It's, it's everything that you wanted to happen for you, to play basketball at a high level, to, to play for a coach like Coach Cal, to have the teammates that I have, uh, and to have the fans that we have, and the support. Um, it's been everything to me. It's been everything for my family. Um, they're always texting me after games and telling them, tell me that everybody in Emporium is texting them, cheering us on. So it's been everything for them. Now you've obviously played in the tournament before. How does it feel differently this year being a favorite going into that as opposed to an underdog like you're playing now? I haven't really thought about that that, that much, but uh, kind of more recently looking at everything and kind of getting an idea of how things are going to shape up, it's crazy because like, I would have never thought about that. And you want to win your conference championship to get into the tournament, and you want to do the same thing here, but to know that you're going to make it and to know that you're going to have Seen and, and everybody's in tribe with you. We're gonna have a bunch of fans there instead of the little section of the gym being orange and blue. Uh, but it's it's a little bit different. But I haven't really thought about it too much. Have you talked to your former teammates about what you're going through? They have to be living through this experience with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I talked to Walter Ellis a lot, um, and his dad's obviously uh, worked for College Game Day. Lafonso Ellis, so I talked with him too. But with Walt, it's just he's he's asking us like what it's like for. Practices at this time of right, this time of year, because they're a lot different than what we have been going through at Bucknell. Because, um, like I said, you have to win those conference championship games or those conference championship to get to the NCAA tournament. Um, but they're they're loving it. They texted me when, when I scored a thousand points. They were cheering me on. Uh, all my coaches they texted me and just to congratulate me and say it's awesome to see you succeed. And, and it's been great. And it, it really is a family. As soon as you leave, like you're not, you don't just leave and forget about you. Nate, the, the coaches always talk about players should have amnesia, move on. But you, you're so conscientious. I get the idea that it's not an easy thing for you to do if things aren't going well. Yeah. To move to the next play. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you, like, I'm, I'm a perfectionist, or at least I try to be. So you, you want to play perfectly all the time. You want to play great, and if, if you don't, sometimes that stuff lingers on your mind. And for me, I, I try to correct that mistake or do something to to get us the ball back. Like I missed two free throws the other day which I hate because I shoot free throws all the time in practice and after practice, but with a play like that and you miss it, you try to get the ball back and it does linger on your mind a little bit, but that book that I had talked about really helps me out mentally to, to just forget about it and try to move forward as fast as possible. Did you come here with a kind of deliberate plan to make sure you stopped yourself a few times over the course of this few months and soaked in what this experience is because because it would go by fast? Absolutely. I mean, when I first got here, uh, I'm just trying to get healthy, and all the lifts and stuff, I just really soaked in the time that I was able to have with Rob uh, and, the, and the trainers that we had, had in the summer and just appreciate that time. And then Madison Square Garden, obviously, I had never played there. And to have first game as a graduate student there against Michigan State was huge. Um, and had my family there as well. Uh, the, the Ohio State game, my brother was able to make it from California. And then to have the Louisville game, my parents were there again. Um, and just different games throughout the season and to score a thousand points in college for me is always something that I'd always dreamt about as a little kid uh, and to do that wearing this uniform uh, just means a lot to me and then now moving into my final home game here it's a little surreal but definitely going to soak in the experience soak in the time with my family while they're here um, and then go into Saturday's game but just I'm trying to trying to do it it's hard because like everything just it just happens and it's gone but I, I've been reflecting a lot and a lot of great memories have been popping up. How long did it take you to adjust to the crowd? 
when you were playing, something great happens and 20,000 come back? Uh, I mean, I think after after Big Blue Madness, it was it was a little bit like it, it kind of hit me. Um, but I don't really pay attention to it. I, I can I say it all the time. Like when I'm playing, I don't really listen to it. But I can always in the, like I mean this. I can always hear my mom's whistle. I got Bucknell games. The crowd would be crazy, and something would happen, or I would I would do something, and I would react, and she would whistle. I could hear it. But like I don't, I never hear people. I listen to the coaches and my teammates. But like other than that. I don't really pay attention to it, but I can always hear her whistle and my sister. So I try not to think about the crowd too much. But uh, Rupp, Rupp was crazy on, on Saturday. That was the, the time where I think Emmanuel hit that three at the end when the transition stole and hit that three, and the crowd was crazy. I think that was the first time where I kind of like, because I, I wasn't in the game at the time, but I like soaked it in that like, it was, it was ridiculous and loud. What prompted your mom's whistle? She like saying, "Way to go!" No, no, no. It's, uh, most of the time, she's she's probably, but it was it's probably uh, language or body language. If I miss a free throw, she whistles at me. But other than that, nothing, nothing too too good. Did you go for a senior day ceremony about the last year? I did. Yeah. So what are the emotions like? How does that compare? Oh, I think cause I I didn't plan on transferring until after the season, so I didn't think that I was going to leave. Um, and my brother surprised me. I hadn't seen him in two years, so he surprised me, uh, and it really threw me off. I was like one for seven to start the game. Uh, I think my first shot like hit the shot clock, but it's a little bit different because like I know now like this is my right last. <laughs> this is my last one, and it's I love college basketball. And if I had another year, I would stay for sure because it's it's just something that I have like come to love. And um, but it's it's starting to hit me a little bit that like this is my last time doing it. Um, and but I can't think about it too much because I don't want to let that affect how I play. But uh, I haven't thought about it. Nate, if one day one of us writes a book about this season, what do you hope the chapter about you says <laughs> that, you, that you were to this team? A great teammate, um, a great leader, somebody who brought smiles to everybody's faces outside of basketball, uh, a resource outside of the gym um, and inside. Like when we're practicing, somebody that guys can lean on, guys can trust. Um, but mostly just somebody who you can rely on, on and off the court, because that's something that I try to do everywhere I go, um, and just have a relationship with everybody. I want them to feel that they have the same relationship that I feel like I have with them, with me, and just somebody that they could, 10 years from now, they could hit me up if I'm in anywhere near their city, and we can go and get dinner, and it's never gonna be an issue. Because um, like, that's what I had had with my teammates at Bucknell, and, and I know that I'm going to have that with these guys because they're the same people. It's the same kind of kids, come from good families, guys who want to win, guys who want to build these relationships outside of just practice and outside of just basketball. What's, for the future? You know, What's that? What do you hope to be doing a year from now? Playing professionally, wherever that is. Um, it's been a dream of mine, too, to, to be a professional basketball player and, and to make money playing the game I love and not have to go to school doing it, too, um, and just building something for myself later on down the road, establishing myself, um, and, and hopefully I can play for as long as my body allows me to, and then retire and live it up. And what, what surprised you? What were you not expecting out of this experience? Um, breaking my wrist, obviously. Uh, no, I would say just like, I know there's gonna be ups and downs to start this season, um, and I think the thing that surprised me the most was how like receptive and how much, I don't, I don't know how to say, like how much my teammates helped me out when I was going through that little slump. Every day, Emmanuel was always talking about keeping my head up and, and just keep fighting and keep working. Um, and it's a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see, they don't know about because they're not in the locker room with you or they're not in the gym with you late at night. But to, to come into the gym late at night when you're going through something mentally and you're going through something when you're not playing well uh, and to have a teammate like that, obviously he's playing his, his butt off, but to have a teammate like that tell you that he, he believes in you and then have coaching staff like we have here say they still believe in you and that everything's going to come around and just mean a lot. Did you sort of think in a program like this full of McDonald's All-Americans that if you go down they just step over you and <laughs> keep keep going and that surprised you in that I, I think, I don't know if it was, it's that as much as it's just they're also trying to do what I'm trying to do and I, I didn't think, I think like with them they, they, I don't know if it was dragging them down or anything but they have, they're chasing after something too and I didn't think that me going through that slump would affect anybody, but 
I couldn't let that affect my energy, and I did at times. And, and our coaches have gone on me about it. My teammates have gone on me about it, and about not being the same guy uh, energy-wise. And, and I think that's something that uh, I wasn't expecting for them to just be like, hey, don't let this affect how you play. Don't this, let this affect your energy. Because whether you're on the court or off the court, like your energy feeds into what we're trying to do. A couple more guys. Do you have a favorite moment this year at home? Um, I'm not sure. Now, the Louisville game was crazy. That was something that I've been really looking forward to, hearing about the rivalry and, and how people were lined up hours before the game outside of Rupp. Um, I'm trying to think. Maybe letting my brother Andrew be in here and, and him seeing it. Because uh, he had been to Bucknell games. There's only five or 6,000 people there. And for him to be here, uh, and watch a game where there's 20,000 people meant a lot to me because he got to see our workouts and our practices and everything leading up to a game. And, and that's something that he and I had always talked about. Uh, and for him to be here and, and to see that really meant a lot to me. Over the weekend, the College Player Association released a statement saying they said we might want to look into not having fans in the from March Madness with coronavirus. What would it mean as a player to play in a game where nobody's in the stands? I think it would be pretty similar to practice. We don't want to have people in practice, but like not having people in the stands. Like I said, I, I try not to feed into the, to the crowd or into the noise or anything like that, but I don't know. It's just empty gym. That's how I, I try to think when I'm playing, too, is just play with an empty gym, shoot with an empty gym. So I don't know if it would affect me too much because like I guess I try not to feed into it. But I guess I am practicing.